I don't lie about this shit. I came from Best Buy, bro. I was rapping. I had a vision to make music from Best Buy. I just kind of, like, my story essentially is I just wanted to be, I just wanted to do the shit I love for once and not do the shit that everybody was telling me to do. I can't remember how many people hit me the day after that Nashville show with Jaden Spino and was like, bro, you really did this shit. Like, you really, like, you really set your mind out and did this shit. What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm Brian Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. You can catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, wherever you stream your podcast here at the intersection of creativity and currency. You know here on No Labels, we love to bring value through showing you people's journeys who are moving differently throughout the industry and the creative economy, the music industry, all that good stuff. And today we got a great example. So glad that Chris Patrick an artist, a rapper who got the bars for y'all, but got the swaggy melodies when he rapped too. Chris Patrick, appreciate you for pulling up, bro. No, I appreciate y'all having me, bro. How y'all, how y'all feeling today, man? Yeah, it's, good. it's been a good day, man. You know, thankfully it's sunny, you know what I'm saying? So that's all we can ask for. Sun is out, man. <laughs> I feel you, bro. I feel you. That's it, man. I'm not gonna lie. I'm so used to like sun not being out of shit. Like from Jersey, it's weather's ass a lot of the times. I ain't gonna say it's ass, it just be spotty. Like sometimes it'll look like it's about to be a sunny day, then it turn out to rain. Or then some days on the rain, you can't see all day. That shit only rain in your area, sun is out. You know what I'm saying? Or it, get, uh, it gets uh, insanely windy sometimes. That shit mad weird to me, but this is nice. It's consistent as fuck, sun is cool, vibes is right. Hello Christ, you know what I'm saying? That shit is very good. It's, and it's crazy, man, cause I wouldn't take you as being from Jersey. Like you don't feel like a... Oh North yeah, East I remember I said that first Yeah, time, bro. Yeah. You feel, yeah. I, I thought you were from Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you got the locks, you hang out with mostly Atlanta people from the scene. Yeah. And you don't rap like a New York artist, like, or a Northeast artist, like, yeah. you, you get it a lot? Absolutely, I ain't gonna lie, for, uh, we'll be in 2023, I think for the whole year, 2020 to like 2022, everybody thought I was like from Atlanta. So like, sometimes I'll be making jokes, like, yeah, I'm from, my, my man's, my man's Marco gave me a fucking place to say I was from whenever niggas thought I was from Atlanta. I can't remember where the fuck it was, but it was some bullshit out the way shit. Like, all right, he kind of from Atlanta, but he not really from here, so it makes sense. But um, yeah, man, I just, uh, I, I went through that for two years, but then I had to just start telling people like, yo, I'm from Jersey, I'm from Jersey, I'm from Jersey. Definitely a lot different, but I grew up on a lot of niggas. Like, I grew up on a lot of like Northeast shit, but like a lot of the favorite niggas is from the South. You know what I'm saying? A lot of favorite niggas from Chicago. You know what I'm saying? A lot of niggas I feel like don't be walking around with their dress swinging, but that's my vibe, so that's why I be on. Yeah, it's normal for me, I get that a lot. Does Jersey play out in your music at all? Like any of your energy? Oh yeah, everything. Every, every, every story I tell comes from a place of um, trying to almost let niggas know we here. You know what I'm saying? I feel like Jersey's been a slept on place for a very long time. We do have a lot of amazing uh, talent coming out of there, but I still feel like there's a light that should be shined on that area as a whole. Um, from the aggressiveness, from the aggressiveness, yeah, from the aggressiveness with which I rap, I think can be it comes from that that, that space, you know what I'm saying? Because you don't really see that too much. You do see that in the south and stuff like that, but I feel like that, you know, shut up, dickhead energy come from that <laughs> northeast. <laughs> you feel me? That's the best way I can really quantify that shit. Like I feel like that swag and that braggadocious energy to try to like impress or just show that shit comes from that space and time. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of, uh, I've been seeing Jersey Club music take. Yeah, y'all yeah, having a moment with that. Uh, yeah, they're yeah. going crazy with yeah. that. So like I've been incorporating a lot of that shit into my music again, which is really, really dope. Unreleased shit that has yet to drop, but I've been adding that shit to the, uh, the template. And then honestly, just, you know, again, by telling niggas I'm from Jersey when they think I'm from Atlanta, that's a big thing for me too. Just letting niggas know like, hey, this is the representation. I've seen a lot of Jersey niggas leave and not say anything about where they from. But for me, it's very important that I tell niggas, like, hey, I'm from New Jersey, East Orange to be exact. So that way niggas from Jersey know there are people pushing to make that, you know, build that infrastructure for, you know, that area. Yeah. That'd be big for me. So like, at this point, are you, are you, you're official in the industry, right? So you Shit. move this shape. You, look, you just talked about being at Best Buy, <laughs> right? <laughs> Thanks. And now you out Fuck here, you know what I mean, LA. You know, you've been through situations. Yeah. Now, you, you, right, you say you, you're in between situations. Yeah. Like, tell, let, let's go back to that Best Buy journey, matter of fact, Facts. right? Like, what was it like? Like, how did you think about I was, you were going to get into it? Did you say, hey, I just need to go get signed? Did you say, I want to be indie or I'm just trying to go viral on the platforms? What was your approach and mindset back then when you were trying to get up out of you know, your um, day job? You know what's crazy? When I was initially doing this shit, I never thought about getting signed, none of that shit. I just thought about community building. That was the first thing I always clicked in my mind. Um, I have realized the power of this shit. This is so fucking funny. But it was the summer of 2019, I believe it was. And my homie, named Dean, sent me a video. He sent me, he sent me a, 
sent me a video about some of the homies. This is a, this is, this is, this is my dog, his name is Shofu. He lived kind of in um, raps that kind of revolve around like the anime Pokemon world and shit. He was like, yo, bro, you should rap with this. I'm like, bro, I don't even really do this shit. I ain't played a Pokemon game in like 10 years. But he like, bro, look, don't even look at that, don't even look at that shit like that. Like, look at it as an opportunity to grow this shit. And I'm like, bro, are you fucking serious? Like, you dead ass? And he like, yeah, bro, do that shit. And I did that shit. And that video, I think, did like a fucking million views with, for them niggas in the first month. And I remember spending every day after Best Buy, when that shit dropped, I was two hours. I would come home, lay in my bed. I was tired as fuck. And I was just commenting on every single person who commented on my shit. Oh, Chris Patrick got the best verse in this shit. There was like 20 motherfuckers in the cypher. Every nigga that said Chris Patrick got the best verse, I was commenting, commenting. Hey, yo, bro, thank you. 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 And then eventually, I didn't want to post it on Twitter, but one of my homies posted it on Twitter. Went viral. All them niggas who saw that shit on YouTube saw it on Twitter and then connected with me. And then from right there in that moment, community started building. And that's when I realized, I'm like, bro, this, ain't, this shit ain't about nothing else but building a community. To this day, I've seen a lot of them niggas pop out to the tour. They, they in the merch line talking about some, bro, y'all wasn't here since the Chris Patrick Pokemon Cypher days. What the fuck y'all know about that shit? And it's amazing to watch because it's like, that was in 2019. We just did a sold out tour, 2023. That's fucking amazing. So like for me, it's always been community building. I was in Best Buy writing raps and shit, just thinking, all right, cool. I know that my story is something that ain't different than nobody else's. I'm working a nine to five. I got dreams too. If I keep putting these raps out and I keep hitting this specific audience of motherfuckers who just work this job that they hate and they want to be something greater, it's going to connect. And from there, we just kept building the story out, bro. That's been the whole thing, just building community. And I've watched the community building take me farther in this shit than anything else has. Like, fuck cosigns, fuck, working with whoever, community building has been the biggest piece for me that has opened more doors to me than I even realized. Yeah, so how, how have you built on that? Like, what does community building for you right now look like? For me right now, it's, I interact with everybody. I interact with everybody. You DM me, I'm gonna hit you back for the most time. Sometimes I don't get to things because sometimes I just be all over the place, but I try to do everything in, our, in my power to like cater to that, whether it's hopping on lives and talking with folks, folks DMing me, seeing people outside in real time and talking with them. That was probably my favorite thing. Like 2019, I'm building a community. 2020, I think I had a good moment to, 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 to grow because we're in the pandemic and I already had a community that was stuck in a crib. And then 2021, getting outside and seeing all these people for the first time, it's fucking amazing. So for me, I just try to pop out to things. I try to respond to as many DMs as possible. I try to do lives. I try to let my personality show as much as I can. Like, I feel like rap be too serious sometimes. So, you know, I just try to let my personality shine because I think that's one of the biggest pieces that has helped me with building this community. I'm a fun motherfucker who likes to rap about and sing about all the same shit we all going through every day. You know what I'm saying? What would you but say I, the people that relate to you kind of buy, what's their vibe or what do they believe in? I think they believe in just being better for themselves. You know what I'm saying? That was, the, that was the, probably the biggest thing. Um, I feel like everybody who's ever came to one of my shows or seen me perform live, one of the things that I always hear synonymous over every comment is like, bro, I remember where I was when, y'all heard you, when I heard your music. This is what I was going through. And when I bumped this song, it helped me get through that moment. And that's been the piece that has linked every single fan of my music. I don't even like to call them fans because it's honestly be a big ass giant family and shit. But like, that piece being like, hey, your music got me through a really hard point in my life, or I played this when I celebrated a really big win, that's been the piece. Like, everybody's trying to be better. You trying to be better, you trying to be better, y'all trying to be better. Like, we all trying to be better in some capacity. And if my music can be a home for people, or even just show people that it can get better, it's a win, you know what I'm saying? And I, and I live on it, I don't, I don't mind. I don't mind being transparent about the things I'm going through. Uh, I don't mind telling my story, because at the end of the day, like, my industry ain't no different than y'all industry. Y'all industry ain't no different than the person who's working a nine to five. We all just trying to reach that next height for ourselves. Yeah, gotcha, okay. Yeah. So a couple of moments ago, you, you said that the community building stuff has done more for you than any industry cosign, any industry connect. Absolutely. But 2023 Chris Patrick does have <laughs> industry cosigns and does have industry connect. Yeah, got some cool so, shit happening. Can you talk about like when that started to happen for you? Like when was the moment that you realized like hey, I actually am breaking through into the I guess the more serious side of the music industry? Um you know what's crazy? I still feel like I still got more work to do, but I feel like as I started to pop out and people started to like, I got a lot of favorite rappers right now. When I started linking with some of my favorite rappers and they telling me like, yo, your shit hard, like I know who you are, type of shit. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, that's fire to me. Like, I couldn't even believe that shit. Cause for me, 
And I'm sure for y'all too, we kind of work in a place, we work in a space where our head is always down. We don't always look up. And by the time you look up, you're not even in the same space anymore. Like you're not even in the same space you used to be in. I remember 2020, I'm, you know, I told you this before, 2019, 2020, I'm in the crib writing raps, getting songs, watching y'all videos. Oh, yeah. And 2023, here the fuck we are, and I'm in one of y'all videos, fuck what y'all heard, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's crazy as fuck to me. But it's like, you know, I just, I still feel like I gotta, I still feel like I gotta put some work in. It is crazy though when folks um, say like, hey, I know who you are. I had a funny uh, running with uh, Ibrahim, a co-manager one time. We was trying to, I was trying to get into some uh, party with the homies in here in LA. And my manager at the time was like, yo, that's E, bruh. And I'm drunk as hell. I'm like, bruh, I can't go talk to no E right now. I'm drunk. Like, what if I slur my words? He like, nah, bruh, get it the fuck together. Go talk to E. So I walked over to him. I was just like, hey, what's up, E? My name is Chris Patrick. I'm an artist from New Jersey, blah, blah, blah. He like, what's good, my nigga? I already know who you are, bruh. You hard. And in that moment for me, I was just like, oh, shit, you know who the fuck I am? That's crazy. But like, you know, again, it is dope to see folks, you know, know who I am, but it, it still don't feel like it yet. Like, I still feel like I'm a rookie in the league trying to put these numbers up. Like, I don't know when motherfuckers realize, this is a, this is a bad example, but a good example. I don't know when motherfuckers realize John ja Morant was that guy, but like, you know, I feel like that. I feel like I got all this talent and shit, but I still got to cultivate that shit into a better way for motherfuckers to realize I'm him. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Okay, I got you. I got what does you. that look like for you? Because like you talked about that, that Pokemon moment, right? Yeah. You didn't even want to do it because you didn't want to be boxed in, but you did do it. Yeah. Obviously, you're not boxed in right yeah. now. Like, did you have to intentionally escape that box, or did you? Was it really not that big of a deal when you think about it back in the? I think when I look back on it, I was so pressed over that moment in my head because I was thinking like, how would I be perceived? But it, looking back on it, it doesn't really matter. Like, I am what I present myself to the world. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm present myself as a rapper, I'm a rapper, and I don't really care about the labels at the end of the day. Like, I know I'm better than niggas. Like, it's not even like me trying to be cocky, but I'm very confident in my talent and my journey and my direction of where I'm going. That I don't think. A, a label or a box is confining enough. For me, when I think about what it looks like, I think it's more so just people acknowledging the cohesion over, I think it's the cohesion mixed with the versatility. Once people can acknowledge that I'm one of the greatest at that, that's when I think I'll be satisfied. But I still got more work to do. I got more shit to prove to people, more shit to show, you know what I'm saying? Again, I feel like a rookie in the league. I'm excited about this. I respect everybody who has come before me, but at the same time, I do want to kill too. So it's like, I still got more, I got, I got more, I got more to do to, to, to prove that, to everybody and myself, you know what I'm saying? I know I'm him, but I still want to get my own accolades going with this shit too. Y'all yeah. prove it a little bit more. Absolutely. Yeah. It's just competitive nature. Like I was an athlete. So in my mind, I, I do a good job of breaking it down. It's like, okay, as a person, I know I'm on the right path to do shit, but as an athlete, I still want to go out here and hit the milestones too. You know what I'm saying? Mm, okay. Talk, talk more about the, the tour. Cause you, I, I know I, I caught you on the tour with Dende. Yeah. And then you did your own tour, right? Yeah. Before that, right? So there's two tours y'all set up in a year. Yeah. Let, let's talk about that, bro. What was that like? So, uh, the tour I initially did, it was a four city tour. It was really, really cool. Sold out majority of that shit. I think Atlanta was the only one we missed. Right. Uh, again, it comes back to community building. I knew at the time. So rewind. I got the idea actually when we was watching Brent Fires. Brent Fires initially started by looking at all his Spotify metrics and tried to figure out how to plot his tour and shit. Here I am, little Chris, trying to figure out how to do the same shit. We just followed the same thing. Went to Spotify and saw which cities were the most popping for all the music that I was fucking with. And it was Chicago, New York, Atlanta, and uh, LA. Now, prior to that, I had did one tour with my dog Grip. Shout out Grip, he took me on my first tour ever. Um, we had hit cities like New York, Chicago, and LA. We sold out New York, Chicago, and LA. Atlanta, we came close. I truly believe the only reason why we missed Atlanta was because we had never had any like history or footprint in that city prior to that before. So with this tour, it was really, really dope because we got to see whether our ideas between community building and the vision for what we had would come together. And it damn sure did, you know what I'm saying? LA, turn that shit up. New York, turn that shit up. Atlanta, turn that shit up. It just came down to like really honing in on where the community was at. Like at this, at this stage of my career, I kind of just see it as like, a leveling up process. Like, okay, cool. We did four cities at this cap size that uh, we sold out. Now the next goal is to try to do bigger caps in those cities again, and then also open it up to more cities that we hadn't hit before. It's just about really just watching those metrics and then uh, just building upon them. You know what I'm saying? Then they doing the same shit with his tour. He kind of labeled, like he uh, basically uh, set up the cities based on his community. Like we don't run away from what works or where we see it working. We go straight to it. I feel like a lot of times artists tend to run away from what works for them, but you gotta go out what works for you. Okay, so one of the most important things that artists have to realize, if you truly become a brand, 
then everybody that buys from you no longer has to be a fan. I know that sounds mind boggling. You have people buy from you who support your career, who support your movement that aren't even fans. But the truth is regular businesses do this every single day. And that's how we had this realization that we then began to capitalize off of with our artists. And if you wanna see this for yourself, I'll show you for completely free. If you go to www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash monetize, you have to put in www. And if you're on YouTube, you can find it in the description somewhere. So just go there and I'll show you the massive paradigm shift that we had that that allowed us to start to help our artists monetize their audience way faster while increasing the amount of people that they can monetize at the same time. So basically a lot more money, you know what I'm saying? So check it out, www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash monetize while it's completely free to check out. Back to the conversation. I've always wanted to, man, because I looking at your, um, cause Crossroads is, it's not a label, right? Is it more of like a management company? Yeah, management company, CXR, yes sir. Yeah, so you, from what I've seen looking into you and Dende are kind of like the, the flagship artists, right? Yeah. Are y'all competitive in any way because, of, yeah. because of that? Fuck yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. Abs <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Oh my God. I can't even tell you how competitive me and him get. It's like unspoken. That's my that's my best friend. So like we, we go at it and stuff like that. And we, we joke all the time. But when it comes to making music, bro, that shit is crazy. Um, I remember hearing, uh, I remember he heard X-Files and was like, yo, I gotta get my shit right. Motherfucker dropped a fucking EP in a very stellar album. And I'm over here like, all right, Cool, you done raised the bar for me, so now I gotta go back and uh, get crazy with it. And it's not on no like toxic shit, like, oh, I gotta kill, bro, but it's just like, you know, I respect his artistry. I respect him as a person. I respect everything that he's doing. I respect everything he's uh, creating as he's paving the way for himself. And it's like, as his brother, you know, I wanna be able to match that same energy too. You know what I'm saying? Again, like, when John Morant was off, he had Desmond Bain. This is so funny how I'm using John Morant. Niggas be telling me I look like Josh, so this is great. Um, but uh, when John Morant was having bad days, Desmond Bain stepped up kill shit, you know what I'm saying? That's just how it go. And that's ultimately gonna help make what we're building grow and to be something greater. Like, you're only as strong as your weakest link. And if somebody slacking off, you wanna make sure you get on them. Like, watching Dende's work has taught me how to make better songs as a rapper, you know what I'm saying? Like, one thing that rap need is great songs. Watching him has shown me that shit. So like, you know, I just been pouring more of my time into that. Like, he's a great person to learn from, a great person to work with, and a great person to work against as we building in this motherfucker. Like, I kind of think we got the idea from Earth Gang and Jay, like watching them go back and forth and shit. Crazy. Yeah, but yeah. Well, to your point though, it's an advantage. Cause like I said, if you're having an off, I don't know, let's say you like, man, I just want to step back, make some music, yeah. take a little bit off. Then like, then they can carry the weight for a little yeah. bit. And then y'all switch. switch. Trade off. And then when y'all both ready to come out at the same time, then Crossroads as a whole is just, just extra good. Yeah, bro. That's, that, yo, I swear to you, that's literally how we've been looking at it. Like, even to the point where like, so sometimes we see, things that are happening further down the line. Like, Jid and Spino did their co-headline tour. That was fire as fuck. I got to be a part of that shit for a little bit. And uh, I got to watch that shit. It was cool. I was uh, on the Nashville show. That was fire as fuck. We started thinking to ourselves, like, what if we did the same shit? What if, what if me and Dene release a project and then we do our own version of that? Who said we can't do that shit? It's going to help build the community. Everybody's going to come out. We're probably going to sell them dates out. Like, we think in the same way. We're just trying to build this shit up. We're trying to build the, uh, the, the movement of CXR up to an even bigger level. So we're just step by step, you know what I'm saying? That's it, bro. Yeah, yeah man. I wish, wish y'all had everybody here, man. Cause like the the way y'all been telling me about how y'all are like building, I don't know if I can talk about it out loud. Yeah, like a lot of the, the media stuff y'all are doing, man. Oh yeah, we crazy. It's, it's we crazy. crazy. We're, we're not crazy, bro. <laughs> because think about it like this. Like, I think one of the things that helped for a lot of folks who were having their come up in the pandemic was we all on phones. We all looking at our shit. What else are we gonna do? We can literally create the narrative that we want to create and build for ourselves. Obviously, a lot of what we've been building has been authentic to ourselves, but We've literally done everything in our power to make sure we solidify the conversation and talking points. Like, obviously, you know how yeah. we've been operating and yeah. shit, but like, <laughs> it makes sense. Like, I'm a rapper. I know who they compare me to. I know who they say I'm similar to. Shit, let's build that conversation. Let's build that. Let's let's start that up. And then, obviously, as I branch away from that shit, it just works. Like, not giving out too much detail, but you see how they, who they be comparing me to, and then you see me around these motherfuckers. Like, it's all it's a full circle moment too. You know what I'm saying? It's really, really exciting to watch that shit happen. But this whole thing is about creating a legacy and creating a story and building, the, uh, building something that everybody can be a part of. That's the biggest thing. I'm big on inclusivity. I don't like exclusivity. I like everybody to be a part of this journey as well because we all try and grow to be crazy. If you see the random motherfucker that you've never heard of who worked at Best Buy start to make his way up in this shit, everybody going to want to be a part of that shit. Everybody wants to be able to achieve their dreams. There's a lot of people who want to do what we're doing who can't. And we're giving them the outlet and giving them the ability to 
Maybe they, maybe, maybe they may not reach it, but they can see their dreams being li they're living through us vicariously. And that's, a, that's an important responsibility that I just feel in my head we have to keep upholding as we move this journey along for real. Yeah, got you, got you, okay. How do you view collaboration with other artists? I like it organic, you know what I'm saying? I've, I've always been a people's person. I like to pull up on people and just hang out and stuff like that. Like, I've hung out with so many people in this past week and just not made no music. And that's cool with me, because it's like at the same time, I can't make good music with people I don't really know all that well. Like, I'd rather get to know folks. There are times where some great shit does happen sometimes, you know what I'm saying? But it's way cooler when you know folks. Like, when you got that relationship with people, it always makes the music sound better. Like, me and Dende got a really good relationship. It's like, when we get in the booth together, we know exactly what we're trying to accomplish. It's not even like we're wasting time trying to make mid shit. We're trying to make great shit just because we, uh, you know, we know each other very well. I think uh, as artists, as we are moving through this, it is important to get to know the people you want to work with. Not even jumping at the first chance to get a feature or to get a first, they, they just get to know these people. Because you might get a feature and they might be a terrible ass person versus linking that person and realizing they're even a, gr they're even a greater individual. It's like, fuck. If, if we work, we work. If we don't, we don't. It don't even matter. You're just a great fucking person. You know what I'm saying? Like one of my homies, uh, Dr. Murph Gang. We got a couple records together, but that's a great person. Fuck it if we have any, fuck it if we ever had any songs together. That's just a great dude all around. You know what I'm saying? And I just appreciate the friendship more than anything. Records gonna come when they come. You know what I'm saying? But that's a great person. Dende, even if we ain't had no records, that's my brother. Great person. Jordan Ward, another guy. Great dude all the way around. We don't get no records, that's fine. He's just a great, just great person. You know what I'm saying? But I definitely think with collabing, it should be something that just or happens organically, something that's seamless, something that shouldn't be forced. Because when it's forced, you can almost feel it sometimes. Oh my God, like, it's, it's crazy when you think about it, but like, I've listened to records before where you can almost tell where folks ain't been in the same room or have that relationship. It don't sound like a diss record, but it's almost like a fuck you. Like, I didn't really care for this too much. You know what I'm saying? But you, as an artist, and knowing how much I put in this, I can hear that shit. And it, you know, you can tell when it's not like, why is it authentic? Yeah, but wasn't there like a, uh, there was a basketball player this week complaining about he bought a verse from some big rapper. Oh no, that was a football player. A football it player. It might've been Le'Veon Bell and he said, what's um, the baby's guy? Oh, um, oh, the light skinned dude. Stunner? Stunner, yeah, Stunner, yeah, Stunner from Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. And it might have been Moneybag, yo. Moneybag, yo, that's yeah, what it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. he was just like, basically they phoned it in and he just never put the songs out. Yeah. Yeah, be like that. You, yeah. you might not feel that shit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, that shit is tricky, man, but yeah. it really is important to get to know people, stuff, stuff like that. Because at the same time, when I, when I collab with you, it's not even like I just want to first or nothing. I'm investing in you as a person, too. You're investing in me as a person. Like, we might as well get to know each other to know what we're about to be a part of together. Because our legacies are both tied into this shit. Let's say that shit is a hit. We tied together forever. We locked in, twin. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's cool to get to know these people. Yeah, it's just interesting, though, because I think from, from the artist's perspective, it's relationship building. From, let's say, the label's perspective is, is marketing. And then from the fans' perspective, it's just like cool to see artists you like link up. Even if y'all like, we learn later that y'all don't like each other behind yeah. the scenes. So, like, do you ever feel the label side of it and the fan side of it conflicting with like your, you wanting to build a personal relationship first? Like, do you ever feel that pull to make something with somebody you don't have a relationship with because you know it could be a good marketing op because you know your fans would like to see it or something like that? Um, nah, not really. I, I like, I look at it like this, like, I think I've cultivated a fan base that's understanding of just patience and just, hey, we gonna give y'all the best shit ever. Uh, when it's time to give you all the stuff that y'all hoping for, it's gonna happen. And I feel like the time it takes for something like that to happen makes the moment so much sweeter when it finally hits. Like, imagine you ask for, imagine you say, yo, I want a billion dollars and I gave you a billion dollars tomorrow. You're gonna appreciate that billion dollars, but if you worked for that a billion dollars and it came over a long time, that shit going. I mean, granted, if I give you a billion dollars, we still turn the fuck up. Like, we, we outside. Like, what Dre do spend like a million in a strip club type shit? We could be in wherever tomorrow. Like, we could be in. We, hey, we might lose it. That's the problem. Exactly. Though. It came you feel too me? Fast. It's not as sweet. You don't really feel that shit. But, like, when you work for some shit and it hits over time, it's like, ah, man. Like, imagine, and <laughs> this does happen, imagine 500 motherfuckers went and go at it somebody to say, yo, work with Chris Patrick. It don't even feel authentic at that point. Versus, like, working into that space and getting into that room and having that moment. It's just like, Damn, it feels better for me. It feels better for the fans watching. And fuck whatever the label talking about. But um, you know, that's really what it comes down to at the end of the day. Like, we all gotta be able to see this whole cycle grow. You know what I'm saying? Like I remember, I remember um, you know, being a fan of Jig, you know, like waiting for that moment he got his record with Cole. And then he got off D's and it's like, fuck. Yeah, shit was crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, oh shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
or just like um, even let me let me see who's another one that I was really 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 stoked about. Um, oh, recently just happened. Uh, Coco Jones with the ICU with Justin. Oh, yeah, that's fire. That was cold. Too. That's cold yeah, as fuck. Yeah, like cold. wow, because I remember uh, they did the uh, to the end of time joint with her and um, Leon Thomas. And that shit was fire. Yeah. And then boom, here we are. Yeah. I don't know if that was a player or nothing, but that's fire as fuck to watch. Imagine if he just jumped out of the gate and hopped on it. It would have been like, okay, that's cool. But like to watch those steps, that's important, bro. Everybody wants to see the process. Um, watching like LeBron James not win nothing in Ohio, then going to the Heat, winning shit, and then coming back to Ohio. That's fucking fire. Yeah, it would have been fire if he won that shit out the gate. But still, that's fire. We love a great journey, bro. Everybody love the long route. So I'm cool with taking my time. I don't ever feel pressure from nobody, for real. Not no more, at least. I think I used to, but I think I'm getting, I know myself very well. I don't, I don't move at nobody else's time. I move on my own time, and I just know everything takes time for real. For real. Yeah, so what was the, the connecting point for you with that? Because you're right, right? Like, I don't yeah. think a lot of artists realize that sometimes we are equally, if not more, invested in the story than the yeah, music sometimes. And like you said, like, there's usually not a story out the gate. Like, it takes time to build yeah. a story. So what was that kind of like light bulb moment for you with that? Man, I got a couple. I ain't gonna lie, I got a couple uh, crazy ass stories. I was working at Best Buy and um, I was uh, in my homegirl career and um, I got a, somebody tagged me in some post talking about some, yo, you should work with Chris Patrick, you should work with Chris Patrick. And there's this random dude from Atlanta named Deontay Hitchcock who I had no idea who this was. Bro ended up linking me, ended up creating an amazing joint, flew out to Atlanta. Um, we made a song called Typical Shit. That was one of my first ever songs that got playlisted on Spotify. That was fucking amazing for me. Uh, I had a really cool moment with, uh, you know, even, even, even since 80s camp, like I had a really cool moment with like the whole jizz shit, like Phantom Bro, to even have that moment where I was able to open up in Nashville. That's a full circle moment. Like everybody know, like I don't, you know, been a fan of them, Earth Gang, all that shit. Like to see that shit happen is really, really dope. Uh, I've, had a lot of, I've had a lot of moments like that where it's just like the hard work in itself has paid off and shown dividends and it's so much cooler to watch it happen over time. Like again, I don't lie about this shit. I came from Best Buy, bro. I was rapping. I had a vision to make music from Best Buy. I just kind of like my story essentially is I just wanted to be, I just wanted to do the shit I love for once and not do the shit that everybody was telling me to do. And to watch doing what I love bring me to places I never thought I'd be. It's amazing, bro. It's amazing. I feel like that's been the thing. Watching these full circle moments happen that I've probably tweeted about years ago or even spoke to people about it. watching them happen is crazy, bro. I can't remember how many people hit me the day after that Nashville show with Jaden Smino and was like, bruh, you really did this shit. Like you really, like you really set your mind out and did this shit. Whole time I'm just like, bruh, thank you. But like, I know I got more to go. But again, for the fans watching and everybody who's supporting this shit, it's, it's, it's something that they, they too have been dreaming about, wanting to see happen. How does that feel? Like you always think about people achieving something and that feeling themselves, but to have other people, you know, like be happy and not just like, oh, congratulations, but almost feel like, yeah, you almost helped them achieve a dream, like you said. How does it feel to know you got people along the journey that, that are, you know, that they feel like they're living on life with you? Uh, it, it's really beautiful. I feel like um, as we move through this path a lot of time, I know for myself personally, I can only speak for myself, I get desensitized to a lot of this stuff. Um, I, I'm a head down type of person. I just want to keep working. I want to keep working. I want to keep working. But when somebody hits me and says, like, bro, I've been watching you since 2017 when you only had mixtapes on SoundCloud and you just opened up for them at this show in Nashville, it grounds me again and it really makes me sit back and remind myself of like, damn, this, this is a long time journey. You know what I'm saying? It, like, I don't cry over shit, you know what I'm saying? I, I be in my bag, but I don't cry over shit. All them text messages kind of made me cry because it made me realize like, damn, we did come a long ass way and it is fire. And again, it makes me feel like, you know, obviously I don't owe anybody anything, but it makes me really cherish the responsibility I have to keep this shit moving. Because again, there are a lot of people who may not be able to do the things that they want to do in life, but if me doing what I'm doing is opening, you know, if it's giving them a chance to just feel a level of happiness and bliss, bro, let's keep it going. Let's keep building this shit. Let's keep being great. Let's keep doing this shit because, again, I might at the moment not be all that excited about a win, but somebody else that I might have not have met is getting them through their days. Fuck it. Let's keep, let's keep balling. Let's keep doing it. Like, literally. It's, it really is amazing. It, it does make me feel, like, really grounded. And, again, just to sum it all up, I know I have a responsibility to keep this shit going and keeping it transparent with people because, again, I'm helping people get through their days every day. Like, I had Cole helping me get through when I was coming up. Yeah. It's crazy to think I'm doing that for somebody else. That's an interesting paradigm that you just said. Not owing anybody anything, but still having a responsibility. Yeah. What's that mean to you? Uh, I think that's the journey of manhood in, a gen in general. Like, um, 
we don't owe anything to anybody. But I feel like, especially as black men, bro, we have a responsibility to at least pave the way for the people after us. And I kind of just take those same messages that my pops gave me and I transcend it to everything I do in this industry. Like, even though I'm in this for myself and I'm with my guys and we working this shit up, there's still a kid out there who is just like me in school listening to my music thinking like, yo, it's gonna be okay. We gonna figure this shit out. We, gonna, we, we, we have a dream and we could eventually get there. Like I remember when Dollar and the Dream dropped, I'm playing Call of Duty thinking like, damn, this motherfucker talking. Like, you know, like, not Dollar and Dream, uh, Cylon Story. I'm listening to Dollar and the Dream 3 and I'm just like, damn, this motherfucker really talking to me and I'm in my fucking seventh grade hearing this shit. Like, even though I don't owe nobody, I have a responsibility to keep this shit going. Just keep upholding myself in the best way possible because it's standing, you're paving the way for people. Like, who knows where my journey ends? Like, who knows where my journey ends? All I can say is that, you know, eventually down the line, nigga Cole gonna realize he influenced a nigga like me to influence another nigga who might change the world. It's just how it go. We just vessels for this shit. So as long as I continue to uphold being a vessel to the highest and just keeping the vibes positive, who knows what comes next? You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all could be inspiring the next great genius filmmaker right now. You never know. You could have had somebody see it. I saw y'all videos built my shit around y'all. You see how this shit all just come together? We have a responsibility to at least be our best version so we can influence the next people because it comes back to us in ways we don't even realize. One of the greatest quotes I think I ever, uh, I ever read was, we have to plant seeds for trees that we might never feel the shade of. That's how that shit go. You feel me, that shit? <laughs> I told y'all niggas I'm pulling with that shit, baby. Nah, literally, man. But as, you know, I feel like we just gotta, we have a job in this motherfucker to just keep pushing good vibes for the next man, for real. How do you look at, do you consider yourself an optimist or a pessimist? I consider myself, I consider myself as a man just trying to be realistic about life. Um, I don't really lean too far optimist. I don't, I don't lean too far to the happy side. I don't lean too far to the negative side. I think all of those shits make me a very well-rounded person, but I'm realistic too. It's like, if I'm sad right now, I gotta do everything in my power to remove myself from that space. And if I'm too happy, I gotta also be self-aware of how quickly things can change. And um, with that mindset, it always keeps me on my toes. It always keeps me in a space where, you know, we gotta keep the, we gotta keep the ball rolling. Because I feel like when you lean too far one way, you miss so many things, you know what I'm saying? I try to stay as well-rounded as I, as I can. I try to, you know, me and my guys, we do the same shit too. We don't never get too high, we don't never get too low. We going through shit right now, you know what I'm saying? But we balance that shit out by just keeping the work moving. And when we get too high, we always pull ourselves down and be like, hey, keep the work going. And I think that's important, you know what I'm saying? Like, as I'm developing in this shit, there's never a time, at least for me, to just, oh, I'm gonna kick my feet up and chill and shit. Like, nah, we gotta keep this ball rolling, keep this shit going, because there's still more things I gotta do. I do keep a positive energy about me, though, because I don't ever want people around me to ever feel down and stuff like that. But truthfully, I just realistically push myself forward. I'm like, all right, I got a dream. I don't like Best Buy, I hate this shit cool, either I'm gonna stay here or I'm gonna figure it out. It's that simple to me. And I just chose to figure it out. And I realistically moved my life through that. You know what I'm saying? I think it's pretty easy, you know, for the most part. So, it, so thinking back to the, the Best Buy moment, the, the Pokemon song, right? Like, yeah. like you said, there was something you, you didn't wanna do or you didn't feel like it was right, it worked out for you. Has that changed the way you view certain opportunities now? Like, do you look at certain things and be like, hey, even if I don't necessarily feel like this is where I could find value from it, or do you still go 80, 90% off of how you feel about the opportunity? Uh, it really, now, so me, I do it on feeling. My dog, you know what I'm saying? He be like, hey, bro, do this make sense? I, what are we doing this for? Do it make sense? And I think it's sometimes about finding the balance between that. Like, I know I could be a hard ass sometimes. I think no, no, he know. Like I could be a hard ass at times, but it's like you know, if I if if it, if it makes sense, we gonna do it. But if I feel some shit strongly, I'm gonna do it too. You know what I'm saying? That's just that's just how it is. I don't really put too much stock into it. Obviously, when it comes to the marketing and branding shit, that's that's they bag. You know what I'm saying? I'm never gonna go against that. But a lot of times I do things based on feeling. People have sent me songs before, and I'm like, hey, I really like this. Fuck everything else. Let's do the song. And I learned that from a nigga like Deontay. Deontay just fuck with the song. It was like, hey, I'm gonna do this. Again, paying it forward. So for me, I just base it on feel. There are some times where it's like, okay, we definitely not gonna do that because that don't make no sense. Like, you know, me going to the Pornhub convention. That might not make no sense for me. Shit. That's just a random example. That's like okay, really super like, far right. Like, like, <laughs> I've never been invited to the Pornhub convention, you know what I'm saying? But that's like super far right. But um, yeah, I just, you know, if, if it feels right, I'll do it. And if it makes sense, I'll definitely do it for sure. Gotcha. Does it, does it ever conflict? Uh, nah, usually when, 
hmm, has it ever been a moment where shit conflicted? Nah, I'm a pretty easygoing person. Like, right. things make sense to me. I don't ever, I'm not no super hard ass or shit like that. I kind of like, okay, could I see this making sense? Could I see where this goes down the line? For sure, let's do it. And then there are times where it's like, okay, that really don't make sense. Let's just stay far away from it. Yeah. But most times I can feel that in my gut too. I just trust that a lot of times. Got you, got you. Yeah. Okay. If I'm speaking too fast, let me know, man. That's that Jersey shit. I'm sorry. No, you're good, man. You, you, you perfect. You're going to keep them entertained. Man. Yeah, <laughs> sir. Turn me up. Yo, man. Yeah, man, but I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure you've seen it. It's a <laughs> my shit. I made a sugar spice connect a lot of cinnamon. Cinnamon. <laughs> me and my bestie, we the same. We like shit. Yo, yeah, I love that shit. We're going to keep you in here to stage, man. And then you have to remember, I'm here. <laughs> But man, what, what I wanted to ask you, man, is like a, a really um, interesting conversation in the rap space over the last at least like three weeks or so Thanks. has been one, we didn't see a, a number one rap album until I guess Uzi technically yeah, cracked facts. that, right? But before yeah. Uzi, we hadn't seen it, right? We started to create the narrative that rap, specifically hip hop focused rap is, is starting to die. It's dead. Yeah, it's dead, Facts. or it is dead, yeah. So you are a rising hip hop artist. You are someone that's building in the space, making momentum in the space. How do you feel about that that conversation? Do you feel like there's some merit to it or do you feel like it's just, um, I don't know, maybe people just not paying attention to the, the right spaces or something Folks like that? Folks not paying attention, bro. They're really not paying attention. Like, I don't think hip hop dead. I think, I think, uh, I think um, right now we living in a space where Virality is taking a little bit of a front seat to everything that's going on. r and having a really good space right now because, you know, for a while folks were saying R&B was dead, but it just took a lot of time. There's a lot of bacon artists rising it. You know what I'm saying? They having a moment right now. Like, motherfuckers is getting back to taking their shirts off and crying in the rain for their shorty. Like, we back to that. You know what I'm saying? But it took time to get back here. And even with rap, it's the same shit. Like, you got Suave, Ben Riley, Marco Plus, uh, Saab, Asar, uh, Joseph Chilliams, um, Tree Novi, uh, Wakai, uh, myself, uh, Noski. Um, damn, I could, I could name like a thousand motherfuckers right now who going super crazy. Fresh, uh, uh, damn, I, I got motherfuckers on top of my head. Um, there's just so many rappers right now that like, I see in the top of my, Domani, Ruben Vincent, Ray Vaughn, Deontay Hitchcock. Uh, like there's niggas off the top of my head as I keep thinking about are coming up in this shit. And it just takes time. Like everybody's talking about how the biggest rap album or whatever, you know, is Uzi shit, but like nobody talking about what Jid did with the Forever Story. Like that nigga slowly building his shit up to a point where when eventually he dropped, it's gonna beat them units that everybody's like, oh shit, da, da, da. but it don't happen overnight. It takes time, bro. It takes time and it takes consistency and it takes putting shit out and it takes being present and creating worlds for people to fall into. Like Cole ain't just wake up as Cole. Kendrick ain't just wake up as Kendrick. It took time to get there. And the whole rap is dead shit is cool, but like it's only like that because nobody's willing to appreciate the journey of artists right now. Everybody wants to finish fucking product. Everybody wants to finish fucking product. Like, I love Coco Jones, but that's a product and work. She had to get to where she was, you know what I'm saying? I hope motherfuckers don't like try to put no crazy expectation on her, but that took time too, you know what I'm saying? Uh, somebody like Jordan Ward took time, bro. It takes time to get to these places. And right now we just in a space where maybe, 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 maybe right now it may not seem like we got no leaders, but they there, they there, they, they coming, they on the way. Like, there's a lot of niggas right now leading the forefront. Like. We gotta give Vince Staples more flowers. We gotta give Jib more flowers. We gotta give Mick Jenkins more flowers. Like, there's so many Max niggas right now that's going crazy for us to be saying rap is dead. Or at least this lane of hip hop is dead. Like, nah, these niggas are nice. And I think they're getting better with time. The songs are getting better. The shit we're talking about is getting better. Like, back in the day, the conscious motherfuckers wanted to talk, talk about the hoes. They talking about the hoes now, for sure. They talking about them. Kenny Mason, like, there's a lot of, I'm gonna just keep rattling off niggas as we go through this motherfucker, but like, there's so many raw motherfuckers. Topaz Jones, there's so many raw motherfuckers coming up in this shit. And for people to say rap is dead, we just not paying attention. Like, if you just look, you're gonna see it. But what's gonna happen is in about two, three years, it's gonna be an abundance of us. And everybody's gonna be like, oh, rap is back and alive. And it's like, bro, it's been like this since 2023. Shut up. Like, I don't think people realize how many great rap albums dropped last year. Yeah, a lot there were so many phenomenal albums. Like, didn't Tyler drop last year? I'm tripping. Or was that year before? I think year before. I think it might be year before. That's a broom. Tyler kicked that shit off. You got Saba dropping on some wavy shit. Me dropped some wavy shit. Jid dropped some wavy shit. Kenny dropped some shit. I dropped some shit. Marco Plus dropped some shit. Ben Riley had a fucking moment. Suave dropped some shit. Like, everybody was dropping last year. There's a lot of up and coming niggas. And maybe niggas don't know their names now, but in two, three years, everybody gonna know their names. Yeah. Niggas nice. So here's the only pushback to that, right? Mm -hmm. I know a lot of times when they have that conversation, they're speaking at the most pop level, right? Yeah, to your for sure. credit, these people on, on 
you know, they're about to take the reins. For sure. He is just still being nurtured, nurtured. Why do you think we have that gap, though, right now? It's a hibernation moment. Like, as a rapper, I feel like there's a desire to want to prove yourself. There's a desire to want to show motherfuckers we can rap. It's just it's, it's the training ground. That's how it goes. Once we get over that shit, good songs start getting created. You know what I'm saying? That's just the process of this shit. Cole was rapping crazy as fuck, gun his shit off. The motherfucker gave us working out. <laughs> it might not have been a song that was appreciated at the moment, but that shit did a lot for just did, yeah. culture of trying to move this shit forward. Look at Drake. You know what I'm saying? Like, it takes time to get there. Maybe, maybe right now we ain't got it, but it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's well on its way. Like, again, I hate, hate to reuse the example, but like, look at what Jid Never Story sounded like to what the Forever Story sounded like. There's a lot of growth from him just being a rapper to him being a rap, like a rap superstar. Nigga make songs. Nigga had a, the Imagine Dragon shit that's like one of the biggest joints in the world. Like, that nigga is paving the way for this shit too. You know what I'm saying? Vince Staples moving from a space of just rapping to creating soundtracks that are being synced. Like, we in this shit. Earth Gang creating generational joints that are literally sync crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? It just take time to get there. Maybe we're not there right now, but folks are developing and getting right to get to that space. You've played on a differentiation a couple times here. I would love to know, like, what's the difference between like, just rapping and making great songs? Because you said you had to learn how to make that. Yeah, I did. Uh, I could rap my ass off. But, you know, strong hooks, like, the, since the dawn of time, uh, strong hooks have been a thing. I, one of the, uh, <laughs> Two of my dogs that I really fuck with. I can't say their name because they gonna flame me. They, they, they know who they are though, but I, I went over to their crib in Atlanta and uh, they was telling me like, man, why you always want to sing all your fucking hooks? Why don't you never just put a, put a woman on that shit? You know what I'm saying? Like, why don't you do that? But it's been like that since the dawn of time. Look at Wale. Wale was making great songs, writing these 16s and having women sing his hooks. And they went crazy. Shout out Barry and Zeke, by the way. I don't ever want to oh, not say that. <laughs> you, know, you, know, <laughs> you know how that go. But it's like, you know, they were putting women on songs and making them hook strong. Like, if we want to get to that level where, as rap superstars, and we want, like, if we want to get to that level where we want to take over the world again with rap, we got to start going back to the way it's traditionally been done since the dawn of time. Like, we can't run away from the formulas. Let's get back to making good songs. We all can rap. Everybody can rap. Y'all can rap if y'all want to. You know what I'm saying? But good songs really do separate a lot. Like, look at Kendrick's story. Like, Good Kid, Mad City, and crazy, incredible, incredible, incredible raps. Damn, incredible songs. Great raps on there too. But them songs are so cohesive and. Well structured, there's a reason why that motherfucker has won so many different awards and been critically acclaimed. Yeah. Good songs rule the world. Rap is for like, you know, us as we grow up in this shit, but good songs, bro, take over the fucking world, man. That shit is that shit is that shit is deep, bro, for real. Great songs have literally like let me think of a great song that really uh think about Bad Bunny. I don't even know what Bad Bunny be saying. Great songs though. Shit took over. Shorty be shaking their ass to that shit. I can't knock that. I don't know what he's saying, but great songs. Generational shit. Michael Jackson, generational. Uh, Beyonce made generational music. Great songs. If we want to, as rappers, want to compete with the heavy hitters, we got to make great songs. And then once we make great songs, we make amazing songs. That's it. It's that simple. If we really want to get back to, like, rap is not dead, we want to get back to the big three, the powerhouse conversation, we got to make great fucking songs. Jack Harlow, uh, uh, throw up the jeans, stand to the end, stand to the end. And I don't remember the words, but great songs. If we can get back great songs, that whole rap is dead conversation won't even be a thing no more, bro. Yeah. That's it. And I'm trying to compete, so let's make great songs. Please, fellas, let's make great songs. And shout out to women, too. The women are smoking shit right now. They're having a moment right now because they're making great fucking songs. Like, you know, what'd she say? My pussy pink, booty hole brown. I don't even know the song, but that shit go crazy. Oh, he do go ahead and finish the bars. Yeah. <laughs> Put it on the floor, nah, like, like <laughs> laughing yeah, to the yeah, bank. Nah, shit is not a joke. Imaginary pro, like, come on, like, we gotta get back to making great songs. Ice Spice, great songs. If we can make great songs, we can take rap back to the levels of the glory days, like everybody was fucking saying it was back in the early 2000s and shit. Like, niggas hate on Ludacris. Great fucking songs. What are we talking about? Great fucking songs, man. That's it. <laughs> I'm laughing at you, bro. Oh, you thought you finished that shit? <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, he, they've yep. been trying to demean my, uh, <laughs> my sexy red fandom for the last like, uh, two days. I'm, I'm, I'm hey, bro. Bro. Listen, I hear you. Like, I hear you. You're not going to catch me out singing that shit, but I hear you, though. <laughs> hey, you always got to, you know, you got to give everybody a hard time, man. You got to give over your hard time about something, right? <laughs> yeah, I just, like, she said I'm not good enough. None of my good enough. All of that yeah, shit yeah. that I shouldn't have. Shouldn't have just wanted. Like, come on, man. I feel you. Like, rocking, bro. We got we to gotta get back to that, though. We gotta get back to good vibes and shit. Cause we don't got no, we don't got no anthems like that. We got future, future holding us down. But we future and Drake holding us down. 21 holding us down, but we need some more. We need more. We Too need much more. weight on their back. Yeah, man, we gotta take that shit off, man. Like Bron, Bron getting old. Drake not getting old. Drake getting crazy. Drake getting crazy. I swear to God, Drake getting crazy. But like eventually, 
we got to have somebody come in and take the mantle. And it starts by, like, obviously studying the games, understanding the greats, and then applying that to what we do. Not everybody got to be a Drake, but we can all make good songs. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody got to be a Cole. That's another thing, too. Like, not every, we're not going to get another Drake. We're not going to get another Cole. We're not going to get another Kendrick. That's just how it goes. So but it's not for the reasons everybody thinks. Oh, we're not going to get another Kendrick because X, Y, and Z. I mean, Kendrick is Kendrick, bro. He grew up where he grew up. I'm Chris Patrick. I grew up where I grew up. If I'm gonna be the next nigga, of course I'm not gonna be the next Kendrick. Nigga, I'm gonna be the next me. Like, there is a next coming. We just have to be open-minded to what that new shit looks like. And it'll be undeniable. When it hits, we gonna know. But we gotta just be open-minded to what the next looks like. Yeah, 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 of course we're not gonna get the next Drake, but we gonna get a nigga who nice too, who's not Drake, but has a level of impact that will be unrivaled, that we'll be able to appreciate when it's all said and done. You know what I'm saying? I love that, I love that. As a final question, man, I would love to know, what do you think, no, I'll say it this way. What does the term no labels mean to you? Um, cause I feel like even with no labels, you could be a part of a label and still be no labels. Um, I think no labels is uh, limitless. I think it's limitless in everything. It's uh, limitless in creativity, limitless in the way that you move, limitless in the way that you present yourself. As people, we are ever changing. We're not just one thing. I woke up as Chris Patrick today, but the Chris Patrick I woke up to, as today will not be the Chris Patrick tomorrow because the Chris Patrick would have grown by then. You know what I'm saying? It's limitless. And we have to be open to the idea of us being like water. We're formless. We have the ability to grow and change. Uh, with no labels, again, live your life under the guise that you can be whoever you want to be. You can push for whatever you want to push for. It just takes a matter of you believing in that. Like, if the idea is, um, I'm going to be an astronaut someday. Who the fuck telling me I can't? Like, who's, who's going to tell me I can't do that? If I put the work in, I'm eventually going to get there. I didn't think when I was back at Best Buy that I'd be sitting here with y'all having watched y'all videos when I was in college. Yo, I remember specifically, I was in uh, my fucking stats class that I was fucking failing in the back. With my head down like this, watching y'all videos, trying to figure out, all right, what I'm going to do when I get out of this motherfucker with my music? And it's like, here we are, you know what I'm saying? But it's about being limitless. I, understanding, obviously having a direction of where you want to go, but just not limiting yourself to any shape or form. Just understanding that if you, this is what you want to do, push for that shit all the way. Don't limit yourself in your creativity. Don't limit yourself in the way that you operate. Don't limit nothing. Just keep going. So that's what I see with no labels. Just... We can do whatever the fuck we want in this motherfucker. There ain't no box that can confine you. You are where you place yourself. That boy about to go on the ad. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> mean, mean BSL. Yo, I'm trying to tell y'all niggas, man. I come here ready with the quotes. Fuck with me, Chris Patrick. Every day from the 07017, you know what I'm saying? East Orange, fuck with the boy. You know what I'm saying? I got to drop that there. Hey, we can't end it no better way than that, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this Thanks. is No Labels Necessary Podcast. I'm Brandman Sean. I'm Corey. And I'm Chris motherfucking Patrick. You did. And we out. Peace. Appreciate you for watching. If you like content like this, you'll love seeing our music marketing strategies that we use as an agency to actually blow up artists to millions and even billions of streams that are available for free at nolabelsnecessary.com. And the cool part about it that's going to really make you love it is we don't have to be all entertaining and add all this fluff just to get some views that we do on YouTube. We get straight to the information. There's play by play in courses that give you a breakdown of every step that you should do to get success. And you have the ability to have communication with us. We get on live talks, a lot of cool things for members, and it's free just to hop in. So check it out right now at nolabelsnecessary.com.